Hi guys, Adam here at Autobrat Direct. Uh, coming to you today with a maintenance video, so an in-depth video on your DA12 and 21 on changing the brushes. Now, you ask why would you need to change the brushes? So they are a wear and tear item and they will wear down as you use the machine. So eventually you will need to change them upon usage. Now, again, you would need to change them. There's a few signs and symptoms to look for. One being the slowing of the machine, mainly when you put pressure on the pad when you're using it. Two, you may see a fluctuation in the RPM when you're going up and down through the speeds. And three, you may also um, experience a louder sound when using the machine as well. So from just turning it on, it will sound louder than it did from new. This is a sign that the brushes have worn down. Uh, I'll show you a warm brush against the new brush in a moment. Uh, it's just so you can see, and if you do need to change them, you'll know what to look for. So, again, you've got your DA12 and 21. It's the same for both machines. Really simple to do. Um, and you would do this just the same reason that you would change the oil in your car. So, you're going to need a few tools. Really simple. A T20 Torx bit, or you can use a flat-headed screwdriver. There is a slot on the screws for them. A small flat-headed screwdriver for the retaining spring and then your new brushes that are complete in the box when you buy your DA. That is all you're gonna need. So, let's get cracking. Okay, so, first of all, lay your machine on the side uh, with the screws facing upwards, taking your Torx bit, and all you're gonna do, undo the four screws. Now, they will take a little bit, Now we're gonna do this to obviously reveal the innards of the machine um, to be able to change the brushes. Now, it does look a bit technical under here. However, I can assure you it is really simple. And uh, with this demonstration, you'll be able to do it yourself. Uh, don't be scared about doing it. So there are only a couple of simple things you need to do. Again, which I will show you in a moment. It will be all explained and easy to see where you need to put things. Okay, so there's three. And the final one. Now you won't need any tools for taking the version two apart. The version one machine, again, if you have the version one machine, it is exactly the same process. There are four screws and also the covers come off exactly the same. They are just slightly a little bit more stiff to take off on the version one. So with the version two, lift the panel and off comes the side of the handle. So from inside, you can see the trigger, your regulator, your speed module there, and here, just in this metal brass square or rectangle is your brush. So this is what you're gonna be looking for at changing. So all you would do, taking your flat-headed screwdriver, your small one, just at the side, lift up the retaining spring, take out the brush. As you can see here, the brush is now out of the block, and just at the back there, you have a little clip. Now, just put your screwdriver behind and push, and off comes the brush there. Okay, so as I said earlier, I will show you a used brush against a new brush. So these are about halfway down um, and have started to cause some noise. So your new brush is going to go in. So do one side at a time. Okay, press the old brush there. And what you're going to do is taking the screwdriver again, lift the retaining spring up at the side, place the new brush in with the cable facing outwards towards the back of the machine and then lower down the retaining spring. So it's gonna look like that. Then you're gonna take the cable, just bend it round and feed it onto the uh, clip there. And then with your screwdriver, just gently, just push it back onto the connector. Okay. And that is as simple and as easy as that. So that is one side already done. Now the other side, you're gonna to have to deal with a few of the wires and the cabling with the trigger. So what you're gonna do is flip it over. You can try to hold everything and keep it nice and neat. 
However, when you move it, you're going to have to flip that there so that you can see everything. Now, it does work a little bit better and the cabling is a little bit easier. If you take out the trigger, it releases all of the cabling, which allows you better access. So, again, all you're going to do is taking your small screwdriver, lift up on the retaining spring, lift out the brush, and then using your screwdriver again, just separate the brush from the connector. So again, you can see that one has really worn. Pop that one with the other one, taking the new one, lift up the retaining spring, pop in the new brush with the cable facing outwards, and then lower it down again. Again, the same with your connector, exactly where you take, took the old one from and place the new one on there. Gently push it on, and that is both of your brushes changed. Now, again, you can see that the retaining spring is right at the top with the new brushes. You can kind of judge it by where, where the spring sits and how far it's gone down if you ever check them in the future. Um, so all we've got to do now is piece the machine back together. So for this, there are some channels in here. Just make sure that all of your cabling goes back in the right way. Uh, so it does sit underneath the trigger. So placing the trigger with the cabling underneath, make sure you're not pinching any of the cables under there and the trigger sits flush. Okay, you can push the uh, machine back on or the side of the trigger back on and the handle. Okay, it helps if you do flip it over slightly as well so that you can see. So flip the machine back over, push the cables through the routings and then push your trigger back into place. So there we have it. And then the little prong on your handle, just push back through and you have these little guides down the side. Push that through and that is one side of the handle back on. As easy as that, check everything is fine. No cables over the screw holes. Push the other side of your handle back on and then you're gonna pop back in your four screws. Tighten these up, obviously don't over tighten them, just hand tight. Um, there's no reason to be um, really using a, a power tool to do this. Uh, they're quite simple and straightforward. You don't wanna like say over tighten them so that you either crack the housing or the next time you come to take them off, uh, they're really stuck, so you have to uh, give them some effort. Uh, so once this is done, you're gonna notice a big difference in your machine. Um, one, if it was noisy, it's gonna be quiet again. Two, you're gonna have the full function of your speeds back. Um, and three, it's just gonna prolong, prolong the life of your machine again, um, making sure that you get the full use from your machine and it's not going to fail at any time when you are working with it. Uh, so that's everything guys, your machine is back to normal, all put together, ready to use again. So there it is guys, everything's back together. Uh, thank you for watching. Now to make sure you're up on any further videos in the future, um, make sure you like and subscribe, make sure you turn on the notifications so you get our, our, our videos when they come out. And if you do have any comments, just drop them in below and we'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching guys. See you later.